Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic. We are your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber. And singer-songwriter Marcian Lavelli. Joining us today is LA-based singer-songwriter Kobe Mike. Kobe previously... Uh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Kobe previously fronted the popular band Gentleman Hall, and with them played alongside acts such as Young the Giant, CeeLo Green, All American Rejects, One Republic, and Beyonce, who no one's heard of. <laughs> And was award- they were also awarded an uh, MTV M- Music Video Award in 2009. In 2014, Kobe left the band to record his first solo self-produced EP, and he worked with Grammy Award-winning engineer Tom Weir and an all-star cast of musicians. We're excited to get to know more about him and hear all about his new EP. So, hey, Kobe, how's it hey, going? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks hey. for having me on the show. No worries. That's the first yeah. time I, I guess has ever said hi while during the bio. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I like it. We're gonna we're gonna keep that. Oh, absolutely. First time, first time for everything. Absolutely. So uh, we like to start off our shows by asking our guests to tell us three things about themselves that everyone should know. Oh Lord, <laughs> um, three things about myself everyone should know. Well, I'm a hippie. Nice. Um, I I don't surf, although I wish I could. <laughs> and um, I really love tea. Well, you got me on two. Well, you got me on all three of those. Hippie, don't surf, <laughs> love tea. What's your favorite kind of tea? Green tea? Um, probably green, but I yeah, switch it up. I like black tea. I like Earl Grey tea oh, a lot. Oh, of course. Uh, if you want yeah. that extra boost of caffeine. I, big right? time. Big so, time. Uh, what constitutes uh, being a hippie to you? Oh, um, you know. Besides organic. living in the Valley of LA. <laughs> um, <laughs> organic food. Mm-hmm. Um you know, supporting like farmers markets, local farms, um, you know, just free love. I don't know. <laughs> hey, we're both hippies then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all hippies. Are you vegetarian yeah, or vegan? Yeah. No, no. Okay, I got one up on pretty you. Pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. Pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Honestly, it's not competition. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's a, no, you know what? It's actually a joke. I think it was a Simpsons. Are you a fan of the Simpsons? Um, uh, not really. Uh, <laughs> I had a Homer Simpson shirt on. I was, I was like growing up and stuff, but I just, it just got too, uh, too redundant. <laughs> yeah, I've not watched Simpsons in probably, sorry Marcio, something like six to eight yeah, years or something. I still watch it every week. No, but there was a joke on there, which is really funny. And it was, I forget what it, who said it and everything, but it, it was something about being a level five vegan. And it was just a joke. It was, it was kind of <laughs> making fun of how we, you know, like, yeah, how do you know yeah. someone's vegan? I have no idea. Because <laughs> we'll tell you. <laughs> okay there it is there's the joke there it is <laughs> so with with your your band gentleman hall you had some pretty enviable success you had placements in target and samsung commercials and you're featured in tv shows like 90210 and pretty little liars um how did those kind of placements come about um well in 2011 we were really fortunate um to be the first independent band to play on the billboard music awards oh wow um yeah. So that was a cool moment. Um, but after that, in, we, uh, we met um, some music licensing and sync people that, you know, really interested in our music. And, and they took our music and, you know, made it happen. Placed it in those, some com- TV and commercials and stuff. And it was really great. So, cool. Yeah. And you left the band in 2014. Uh, yeah, to do your, your solo, your solo self. So, how yep. did you find the transition between being in a band and uh, and then doing everything yourself? Um, it was tough, no doubt. Um, I was in the band for a long time. I was in the band for about six years, and um, the band was based out of Boston. So it was a big switch moving across the country over to Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely took a while. Uh, you know, I'd say it took the better part of this last year for me to just kind of get back on my feet and and figure out what it is, you know, I, I want to do. And what was the figure, reason? What was for the reason for leaving? It was a lot of things. Um, can't really pinpoint it to one thing. But throughout the uh, end of our time as Gentleman Hall, um, we were surrounded by some people that really didn't have our best interest at heart and, um, you know, really kind of jaded me to what everything had become, I suppose. Um, on top of that, I really, uh, really wanted to find my own voice as an artist and wasn't really allowed to do so in that situation. So, um, it was really important for me to step out and really 
you know, kind of re- hit the reset button and, and figure out, you know, who I am and my own voice as an artist, as well as wanting to surround myself with the right people. I so. think that takes a lot of guts. Absolutely. It was, yeah. um, especially, it was probably you know, scary for you. It was, um, it was, uh, after building that group up for so long and I literally put my whole life into it. Um, I believe it. So it was, uh, it was definitely a scary jump for sure. Cool. Well, we're glad you did it because, uh, your solo material is sounding amazing. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah I, from the first moment I heard, I think it was, a uh, walking through the fire that I heard yes, first that, that and I heard it and I just had this big smile on my face and I was like, yeah, this is what I want to be listening to right now Sweet. and for the next 15 minutes. Yeah. And so then you... let's maybe do 20 minutes, 30 minutes, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't, nice. that doesn't happen very often to me that I want to listen to something on repeat. So good, good job. Who produced really that? that? Who produced I that did. song? So yeah, um, I, Ross was telling me that. That's that's, a, that's one of the first things I said was that it's got such great production to it. Ah, thank you, thank you. Um, cool. I did have um, a friend of mine helped me with a, a, a bit of the produc- production on that one. Sure. Her name is Mia Fitz. She is actually touring with Hosier right now. She oh, plays wow. keyboards for him. Um, so I actually ended up going over to Ireland and um, working on that tune with her a little bit. Um, and she has some really great ideas. So it was really that's fun awesome. to work with her. Yeah. Cool. And you worked with a Grammy Award winning engineer, Tom Weir, and musicians mm-hmm. who have worked yeah. with some other pretty big names on the record. How do you uh, decide? Like Alanis Morissette and Christina Aguilera. I don't know. <laughs> you, I think you've never heard one of day, <laughs> One day, maybe people will hear about them. And how did you decide who to work with on the record? Uh, that was a, that's a good question. Um, after I had moved to Los Angeles, I was um, kind of just poking around trying to find you know the right the right people to team up with and, and work with or the right studio to be at. And, um, I spent a while trying to find a, somebody to produce my stuff, which didn't really work out. Um, I couldn't really find anybody that I was really, that I really wanted to work with. Um, and don't get me wrong. There's plenty of people out there that I love to work with, but I, you know, they're way beyond what I could, you know, reach or what I could afford. <laughs> um, so I ended up just producing it myself, but a friend of mine, introduced me to Tom Weir. He's got a studio not far from me here in Studio City. And um, I went to his studio and he was a really nice guy. And um, he, he kind of let me come into the studio. He taught me a lot of just what I needed to know so I could do all my own in- engineering and a wow, lot of my own produ- production in the studio. So he helped me kind of get around, showed me the ropes in the, in the room. And um, then from there, I just kind of took it on my own. And then he would kind of come in and out of the room and I'd be like, hey, Tom, what do you think of this? Or, you know, can you help me with this drum sound or whatever? And, you know, he'd get his hands on it for a second and then he'd step out and then I would just keep working on it. So it was a really cool That's relationship. That's valuable uh, advice. Yeah, because it was talented year. much more hands-on for me, which was really important. Um, and I got to learn a lot from him. So very cool. And that lets your latest single charting at number one on Hype Machine. Yeah, on the Twitter chart. Yeah, that's that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was great. Um, a lot of people came out and supported me on that release, which I was really happy about. So very, very grateful cool. for. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so obviously, we've heard the first two tracks mm-hmm. from the yep. EP. What can we expect from the other two tracks? Good question. <laughs> um, I, I'd say all four tracks on this EP are kind of standalone in their own sort of, you know, in their own light. Um, the other two tracks, um, one is very acoustic heavy and another one is a little more synth heavy. Um, now is that because you want to give people kind of a taste of different corners of your musicality? Yeah, it's definitely Mm -hmm. that, but it's also just kind of what I felt the songs were calling for, True, you know, um, each song just kind of wanted to be something, its own thing. And it um, should be. Yeah, so I, I just felt like I guess those each song, you know, demanded its own attention or it demanded its own sounds and stuff like that. So I just kind of went with with that feeling. Awesome. Do you have a favorite? Uh, first Snow is probably my favorite. Cool. So do you, uh, you have a new music video coming out, don't you? Yeah, I have a music video coming out very soon for Walking Through the Fire. Oh, which I'm, I'm really excited. excited about. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, basically, I'm in the desert. And, um, I'm having these hallucinations and each hallucination 
um, kind of represents a different obstacle in the journey of life for me or for, for anyone, you know what I mean? So, um, I really think it's a cool concept and I'm really excited about it. I think it looks really awesome. Cool. Who directed it? Um, some, a friend of mine, um, Jacob Steen produced it and he found the directors, um, which are, um, Adam and Riza and I, their last names are escaping me at the moment. Sorry. I apologize. So cool. Yeah. Have you so. seen a rough cut of it yet? Yeah. It's the video is done. Oh, okay. You're just waiting to release. Yeah. Just waiting to release. Yeah. Cool. I so. think we're all excited to see that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's cool. I'm, I'm pumped about it. So. Very, very cool. Yeah. So having been a part of, of a group before, as well as being a Solaris, you have to have some funny stories that you might be able to share with us. Um, <laughs> go on. So no, go on. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So you must have some funny stories to share with us. Oh, Ellipsis. I'm sure. <laughs> um, you know, it's... Uh, a lot of stories in the van, sitting in the van for 13 hours can be, uh, you know, 13 hours at a time can be yeah. pretty tiresome. So you find ways to pass the time. But um, I think more than anything, it's just really interesting to, you know, this music career is just so interesting because one minute you could be playing to an arena with five to 15,000 people. And the next minute you could be playing in a club to nobody. Mm-hmm. And, um, is that humbling? It is definitely humbling. It definitely put, keeps everything in perspective, mm-hmm. you know, because I've kind of, I've seen both, you know, um, and um, it's, I, I think that's the, the way majority of careers go, mm-hmm. you know, even if you're lucky enough where you have these moments where you feel like you're on top of the world and you have these other moments where you're like, you know, feel like you're back down at the bottom. I think of that's the barrel. what saying comes from like, be good to people on the way up because it's the same people you see on the way down. Yeah, and no one is at true. the top forever. You know, no, no one. No, no, no. There, there's no. There's really no. Maybe Prince. Yeah, but, but I mean, and especially <laughs> and if you don't have an ego, I think there's it's okay to be at the different levels as long as you're still doing what you love to do. You know, yeah. and, I, and I really respect the band. I can't think of one off the top of my mind, but I know so many bands that you know they're not at the top anymore, but they're still going. Be, and you know what I mean? And, and they still have their fan base. They just, you know what I mean? That they're, and they're still going. They're still having a very successful career. But totally. very few people I can think of are always at that. It's very, very rare to stay at that level. Yeah. You know I mean? And I think that's really the key is, is you just keep going and you, you'll, find, you'll find moments of success or whatever mm-hmm. that is. But to me, I think success is really just doing it. You know, whether Absolutely. you're doing it on a small scale or a large scale. As long as you're doing it and you keep finding a way to do it, you're you're already successful. You know? Absolutely. So that's really the important thing, you know. And then people will people will find you along the way. They'll they'll uh, latch on and then they'll go away. Then they'll come back and you know it's a uh, it's a kind of a revolving door or a Ferris wheel or something. Well, I kind of know. know what your answer is going to be to this, but what would you rather do? Would you rather be in a massively successful band and hate what you're doing? Or do something that you love what you're doing, maybe to a lesser amount. I, w- I don't want to say the word success. I want to say a lesser amount of mainstream awareness, maybe. Well, I, I, I can't. I, I couldn't do something I hated. I just, I couldn't do it. I would, I would rather do something I was really passionate about and I really felt strongly, you know, that it was speaking a message rather than, you know, just doing something like, I don't know, like One Direction Kids or something right, like that. Right, right, right. Like, um, I'm sure they're my cousins. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> what inspires you to write? Um, everything. Life. My life inspires me to write. Um, the world, nature, um, relationships, um, pain. Not surfing. Sorry. Not <laughs> it's a bad, bad time for me to make a joke when you're saying pain. No, very, very true. That would, no, I love that. Surfing would be very inspiring. I'm just not very good at it. No, but, you, but then you spend all your time surfing and not writing music. No, that's, that's, kind of, the that's why I stay away from it. Because yeah. I'm, like, I'd rather be doing music than, exactly. than surfing. But. Sorry, I cut you off when you said pain. And I think uh, I'm kind of one of those old school artists that consider like the best art comes from pain. And I kind of truly believe that. What's kind of your viewpoint on that? that not, uh-huh. that good, not, not that art can't come from other areas. I just think so some of the I most, think, you know. So what's your what's your, what's your I, I point of that? Really. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I really I really think um, the the best art kind of comes from the depths of your soul. So, you know, and I think that's what 
what really hits people when you when you when you're writing from that that place because it's it's a true vulnerability and I mean a lot of people aren't willing to go there and but people by listening to someone else being able to do that I think that it touches them you know deep deep to their soul like you said and allows yeah. that release even if they're not able to do it um, and able to express that themselves so I think that's kind of a gift that. Uh, a songwriter or any any artist uh, in many different mediums can share if they're willing to go to that depth. Which, what's the point otherwise? You know, if you're not willing to go to those depths, because I think that when people when people say they write to help yeah. others, that's what it really is. That's what it should be. I think. And I think you get that. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I like, couldn't sure. agree more. <laughs> I, I I really couldn't agree more. I think that's spot on. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. So. Cool. Cool. So what advice would you give to uh, a musician who wants to achieve the same kind of success that I know, you... I know, we hate uh, saying the word uh, success. I know, that's yeah. why I was, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mm, I need to think of a different word for success. But I think <laughs> you, you know what I mean, like someone yeah, I do. that wants to you know, be a working musician, um, what, totally. what would be the advice that you would give to them? And if I can add to that also, uh, an artist that might be in a situation that they're not happy in, and they aren't sure of what to do about that. Like, if you could also maybe sure. give some advice on that, I think that would be very, very helpful. Well, first, I would say, um, you know, it's really, like I said before, it's coming down to just doing it. Try to do it every day. Put, put all your, your resources and your energy into being an artist if that's really what you want to do. It's not going to always be easy. You're not going to make a lot of money sometimes. Uh, probably most of the time, <laughs> but, um, if that's really what you want to do, you just have to go, all, you have to dive in. There's really no halfway being an artist or not. I feel like you're either an artist all the way or you're not, mm-hmm. um, finding mentors, people that can teach you things, people that can, um, help bring you up and help bring your talents out. Um, those people are really important. They've been really important in my life through still from the time I was a kid till all the way until today. Um, I can't say enough about that. Um, what was your point, Marcio? Oh, uh, maybe maybe uh, an artist that is in a situation that they uh, that that they don't want to be in anymore, but maybe they feel like you know, for example, if they're in a band and and they don't they they might feel like they're letting the band down by leaving, but they're not happy. And it's kind of similar sure. to being in a marriage or being in a relationship that you're not happy with, you know. But you have to do it sure. for yourself. So. I'm wondering what you would, uh, having, having done that yourself, I'd like to know. I would say really, really try to t- learn from your situation, whatever it is, you know, do that first and, and really try to learn from the people around you. And why isn't it, why is it not working? What is it? Is it you? Is it your ego? Is it your, mm. uh, is it, what are you, you're not getting what you want? Are you not fulfilled? Why is it? Learn from everything around you, uh, before you make any sort of rash decisions, um, and other than that, just follow your heart. Just go with your gut. I think that's the most important thing. A lot of people are afraid to just go with their instincts and go with their gut and are throughout life. And um, they'll find themselves later in life, you know, wishing they had tried something else. Beautiful. So, yeah. Beautiful. Are you ready for 20 questions? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start this one off for us? Yeah, I think we already know the answer to this one. But uh, coffee or tea? Tea. Although I do like coffee, cold press sometimes. But you know, tea. I've never had cold press coffee. Really? Never. I'm not really a coffee guy, just because like the amount of caffeine in coffee would just have me like this like all the time. <laughs> yeah, I never. I just started drinking coffee this last year, oh, yeah. and um, it's it. I get the jitters from it. It's too exactly. much. Too much caffeine. So just the tea. smell of it. Um, <laughs> meat or veggies? Veggies. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Veggies CD, CD or vinyl? Vinyl. Star Wars or Star Trek? Ooh, Star Wars for sure. Canada or Scotland? I've never been to Scotland. I, I can't really answer that, so I have to say Canada just because it's my next door neighbor. There we go. I've never been. You've got, you've got to be nice to your neighbors. We're, we're on top. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what. I, what Scotland's like. I have no idea. So well, it's like Canada, it's awesome. but better. So <laughs> you know. and much smaller. <laughs> much smaller. Yeah. yeah. Much smaller. How about? Yeah. That's I like your answer. We'll stick with that. Twitter or Facebook? <laughs> Twitter. Yoga or yogurt? Both. Cool. You ever had yogurt like while doing yoga? <laughs> while doing yoga? Like, no. You're like pigeon pose or something. Or like <laughs> downward faces. I go. 
<laughs> Breaking Bad or House of Cards? House of Cards for sure. Have you watched it started the third season yet? I watched the whole third season. Yeah, you know, it didn't hook me like I'm still going to watch it, but maybe it was just the wrong time. It didn't hook me like the first two seasons. Really? Oh man, yeah. the writing on the show is too Oh, good. I know it's phenomenal. I know. The whole, I've still uh, never watched any of it, but oh, it is wow. on my it's on my to watch list. Um I'm currently distracted by the Orphan Black and Scandal right now, so uh it's still it's on the list, but okay. it's not a chance yet. <laughs> Indie or major? Indie. Bob Marley or Bob Dylan? Marley. Minnesota or California? Minnesota. Friends or Seinfeld? Neither. Oh, can you, what about a third one? Can you give another uh, sitcom? Uh, I don't I'm not, I've never got into sitcoms. Really? No. no how, about, how about, okay, actually, never mind, it's... Two questions. <laughs> Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Manson. Cool. The Simpsons or Family Guy? Uh, <laughs> South Park. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's a great option. <laughs> Can I throw that option. one in there? I haven't. You have to catch up on the latest season. Yeah. Okay. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Michael Jackson. Twerk or work? Twerk while I work. Ah, <laughs> multitasker. There we go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Ricky Gervais or Ricky Martin? Who's the first one? Ricky, Ricky Gervais. Gervais. Should comedian. I know who that is? Oh, comedian. He's uh, the original guy who started The Office. The original. Oh, okay. I'll s- him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also really host, Ricky Martin. <laughs> he also hosted. <laughs> he also hosted. Was it the Emmys? A few times, uh, and he was like so, like so outrageous. People hated. Uh-huh. It. Well, everyone loved it, but the celebrities hated it because he brought them down to like you know <laughs> the level of normal human being. <laughs> Whale or kale? Ooh, in terms of eating, we don't, we don't know. It's just rhyme. <laughs> yeah, whale, just like whale. rhyme. Kale. Whales. Well, you're from oh whale. Whales. Okay. All the way. Okay. Whales. Uh, Bet Midler. Or the Riddler? The Riddler. And finally, the last question, which is probably the most important question that you'll be asked in... My lifetime. I was just going to say this interview, but sure, your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Ross or Marcio? Oh, God, you guys, man, that's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've been called, it's been called many different things, but that's the first time that question has been called dirty. And I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Bridge the Atlantic. I like it. I like it. We'll stick we'll with that. We'll, that we'll co- you know it. what? That, that question I, used to be funny to me. Now it just makes me uncomfortable. As uncomfortable <laughs> as it gets me, we should just switch it. How do, how do people have picked? How do most, <laughs> and then I'm just like, oh, thanks. Answer that question. The best part is that Ross once we once had a guest early on in our in our show a few months ago that was actually a friend of Ross, and they had just met me, but they totally jumped on saying me. And I was just yeah, like, of course, they had to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been listening to lately? Do you have any music recommendations for our listeners? I do indeed. Here, let me pull up my playlists of as of late. Um, I really love Little Dragon. They're probably one of my favorite bands right now. I love her voice. She's. Made, you guys ever listen to them? No. Really? You've never checked never. out Little Dragon? Never even heard check, of Little Dragon, no. Them, yeah, absolutely. That's what this show's all about. Sharing, uh, finding and sharing new music. Yeah. I really like the new AWOL Nation record. That's really cool. Is there a brand new one out? Uh, it's new-ish. Oh, okay. I only, months old. I've not heard anything oh, okay. that they've done recently, so yeah, I'll need to check that out. Okay, I like they, their yeah, their, their latest record, I think it's a few months old, maybe. Okay. Maybe it came out at the end of 2014. Um... Uh, I also really like Young the Giant. I think they're a great band. They um, they've been working really hard. They tour a lot. Um, let me see. I love David Byrne. I love Saint Vincent. Um, AFX Twin is an old one that I like oh, yeah. a lot. Um, I really dig Portugal the Man. Yay Sayer, James Blake, Haim. Just so many. So many, too many. I mean, absolutely. I don't know. It's actually not. This is not kind, really of a, too many. <laughs> kind of a testament to the to the world we live in today. Because I'd be the same way. I'd be like, my favorite bands. Let me look at my yeah. iPhone. Oh uh, yeah, look yeah. My, like, my iPhone. Yeah, I can't, I, I, I can't I be blank. bothered to remember. No, I, <laughs> I just can't think of them all. Uh, Sunlocks. Have you heard of Sunlocks? No. 
Yeah. Check him out. He's really cool. Uh, oh. Sufjan Stevens. No. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Sufjan Stevens. Awesome. Um, Jungle. Jungle's. Have you heard of Jungle? I've no. heard the name. I don't know. Okay. So out of the loop right now. <laughs> They're sweet. Um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. You heard of them? No. No. Just definitely check them out. They're sweet. Cool. Awesome. And where can people find you online? Good question. They can check me out on my website, kobemike.com, or social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Kobe Mike, C O B I M I K E. SoundCloud. Um, I'm pretty. We should say that Facebook is Kobe Mike Music. Correct. Right. Yes. Right. Facebook Twitter is, is Kobe, Kobe Mike. Right. Yeah. Twitter so, and Instagram is Kobe Mike. Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash Kobe Mike. Well, that's Kobe with an I. Yeah. So cool. This has been awesome. Thanks so much for coming Great. on our show, man. It's yeah. Been a pleasure thank you for having meet me. you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Please come back again yeah. soon. Yeah, I'm really yeah. looking forward to hearing the rest of that EP. And, yes. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, uh, seeing the music video as well. It sounds like it would be really cool. Right yeah, on. so keep us in the loop, and best of luck with everything, man, and uh, so kudos much. to you for following your heart and doing what you want to do with your life, awesome. because we have one, right? Awesome. As far as we know. <laughs> yeah. as we know. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Click on the videos above us if you'd like to see more, and please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome, and we'll see you on next week's episode.